Hey, let us go ahead and get our sis going with the last part of the class today. As you look at oh, my example here, it's kind of doing about what I want. I have sort of these red cells, which are in a very small opening. The blue cells are very large openings. You can really change any parameter value you want to. You'll even find there are some sort of panels we have where there are things that you can turn on or off. There's a checkbox where you can turn things on and off. And if, for example, you wanted to oh, put a panel on here where there was a flat panel most of the time, but you actually had another piece of the panel, like a solar panel that would come in and kick in if the values were above a certain range where it would be worthwhile, okay, you can go ahead and have something where the parameter is just changed to true or false or one or zero, and you know, go ahead and actually, that's a great example of a, a Boolean filter. You can say that, oh, if I only wanted places where the directness value was greater than 0.7 to turn this on, you can do a filter by Boolean and get the sublist of the panels and then just turn that on for them. You have an awful lot of flexibility with this. So it all starts with either changing colors, changing panel parameters, yeah. Let's just kind of pause there for a second. And most people sort of get something like that to run. Excellent. Okay. That is really probably, you know, the gist of a lot of what we're going to be doing here. Here we are looking at the whole notion of comparing the sun vector. Okay, and that's kind of a very powerful way to do it. Let me kind of give you one other slightly, slight variation on the whole thing that you might want to go ahead and think about. And that is this whole notion of as opposed to going to the sun vector, how you could actually consider whether you can view something. Okay, and we'll work it through an example like this later, but let me just kind of get you sort of you know, heading in the right direction. Let me zoom out here. So, in this view, what's basically happening is we're going from each of these different panels and sort of computing a normal. Okay, we also have from each of these different panels, well, you can sort of think of it this way. There's a vector, which is going to the sun. Okay? And what we're really basically doing is taking that vector and kind of doing the cross product in here. So the panels that are facing this way, which are sort of opposite of the direction vector, okay? those are obtuse. They're considered very weak. The ones that are closer and closer are you know, acute. So they're considered to be strong and closely aligned with what's going on. Okay, so that's just sort of based on the sun, but you can always think about it for every panel, this notion of it has a normal, and there's also a vector to the sun, and then really, what is it that is like uh, the angle that's in there? Okay, another way to think about this is if you want to think about there being another object. So, for example, if I was going to go through and put an object out there in space, and this could be some object you want to have a view of, Perhaps it's, oh, you know, the Statue of Liberty, or it's the Washington Monument, or it's something out there which is a distinct object that you want to go ahead and get your view on. What you can do is, in the same sense, say we'll go ahead and have our little Statue of Liberty out here. She's got the crown. She's got a torch. That's actually not too bad <laughs> for drawing that out. Okay. So super, we got her hanging around out there. She's out in the harbor. We want to understand if we have a view of that. We'll do something very, very similar. We'll say that as opposed to looking at the sun, let's go through and for every panel, go through and from the panel location, compute a vector which goes to whether you want to say the base or the crown, whatever it is. We'll compute a vector over there. And we do that by just taking the panel location we take the location of that object, and we have two different points, we can make a vector out of the two of those. Okay? The, uh, then after we've gone through and computed that vector, we still have the whole notion of the normal vector. So that is the vector kind of normal to my surface. So once again, we can do a dot product in there. So this panel on this side would be considered to have a good view because it has a strong drop dot product with that vector, whereas this panel over here okay, has a weak dot product. Okay, so that would be considered not having such a great view of that. Okay, so 
this whole notion of just playing with the vectors, it's, it's really incredibly useful. You can sort of figure out how direct you are to almost anything, you know, whether it's the fantastic view or the sun or just anything that is of interest. Okay, but we'll go through and play around with an example like that a little bit later when we start thinking about entire building facades and the appropriate shape of the building to maximize the view or uh, maximize the sun or how you can actually think about trading those things off because this is a great example of I might want fantastic sun but I also want to get the view and now I have two criteria that are pulling me in two different directions. Okay, so it's a little unclear what the best solution is then. Okay. But enough of that, let's go ahead and shift to like one other example. It's almost the inversion of what we've been doing here. And that's to say, let's not just go through and uh, evaluate. Okay. Let's go ahead and use this notion of the vector to go through and set a value and actually do something smart in relationship to that vector. Okay. We're gonna basically shift over to example 10.3 in 10.3, what we're going to do is basically follow the sun. Okay. You might think of this as being, oh, like an array of solar panels, which we put out there in a solar farm in the desert. And what we want to do is basically always have the panels facing the sun. So just wherever that vector is to the sun, always make sure that we're trying to maximize the, the normal, making sure that it's as close to the normal of the panel is as close to the direction to the sun as possible. Okay. And to sort of get an understanding of where we're going to go with this example, it's actually not too bad. We're going to start by creating a grid of points. This is going to be the points on the desert floor, which are sort of where we're going to put the panels. We're going to create a bunch of vectors from those points that go through and always point to the sun. So we're going to say the point on the ground and the point which is the sun in the sky and create a vector between those two. Then we're going to create some planes that are perpendicular to that vector, so where that vector is normal to the planes, and finally just put some rectangles on those planes. So that's kind of the overview of where we're going. So let me go over to here to 10.3, and we'll just kind of walk you through it. Come back over. We'll open up 10.3, and this is actually a pretty simple little one. And 0.3. You'll sort of see an example of what we have in mind just on the desert floor right now. I say the desert floor. This would be roof panel. This would be solar panels up on your rooftop. There's this whole funny notion. You know, should we have dynamic solar panels that follow the sun, or just kind of leave them in a static orientation? We could even use this example to try and test to sort of see what the difference is, what kind of efficiency we advantage we get by having them follow the sun through the day versus uh, just leaving them in static positions. Okay, so this looks pretty boring right now. This is just, whether it's my rooftop or my desert floor, we've got the sun in the sky, it's in June, we can choose a time, so go ahead and choose a time you like. Oh, what do I want to do? 7 a.m. is a little bit low. Let's say 11 a.m. Sun's a little higher in the sky. Okay. The idea is I'd like to have a bunch of solar panels facing that to maximize the solar collection. So what I can do is as follows. I'm going to start by basically creating a grid and then for the sun object, just computing a vector from the grid points to the sun so that we're always facing the sun. So let's go through and go out and grab in Dynamo. Looks like Dynamo is still open right now. Figure out where that is. Looks like I still have the last example open. This is again one of the things that really calls out for two different screens. And what I should probably do is actually use two different screens for you. I keep it on one screen just for the people who watch it on the video because they can't see both screens. <laughs> so that's why we get into this overlaying thing. If you come up with a good way to, well, I think there are ways, but it'd be a lot of work. <laughs> get two screens and overlay them in the video, picture in picture or something like that. That's a, you know. But there's a good product that needs to be developed in there somewhere. <laughs>
Okay, so let's just take a look at the script. It's all going to start by creating a nice little grid of points. So I can take a little grid of points. In this case, what I'm doing is I'm going from 0 to 20 and creating five points between there in both the x and y direction. But we can create that a number of different ways. You know, we've learned the code block has a lot of different variations to it. For example, if I say 0 to 100 and put 10 in there, it'll do a 10 by 10 grid where it'll be 0, 10, 20. This way, yeah, this is different variations of how we want to think about that. But what I'm doing is creating two different series and then going through and uh, making point by coordinates, doing the cross product again, so I get the field. Then I'm flattening that. So let's go no further. We'll just go through and run that and see what it looks like. Okay, so you'll see I have just a five by five grid of points. And if I want to spread those out a little bit, I can. Let me make it 0 to 50. Okay, so now they're a little further out there. Not to worry. So I just got a little grid of points. Let's pause there. Kind of makes sense. Looking familiar? Excellent. Okay. The sun is handled this way. The sun has some sun settings. That's just grabbed from Revit. So if you have a sun path on and a location and all that good stuff, it'll grab those. We get a vector to the sun. So what is that vector to the sun? That vector to the sun just sort of shows really where it thinks of the sun being. Now let me comment on this. Okay, it has a vector of a length 100, okay, with an x and a y and a z value. But that length of the hundreds of the parts is a little bit troubling. If you think about where the sun is in the sky, it's more than 100 feet away from you. Okay, so this is very useful from the standpoint of understanding where the sun is at different times of the day and as the earth moves under the sun, kind of where the vector needs to keep on changing. This example is a little bit kind of funky in that if you were really thinking about it, it wouldn't be a length of 100. We multiply this by, you know, 10, how many miles, or how many feet away is the sun? It's some large number. <laughs> okay. But then you would hardly see anything going on over here at all because it would be so different, or such a small difference in terms of the scale of this versus the sun. You wouldn't really see very much difference. So think of this as being more useful just for as the sun moves through the sky as opposed to the position of any individual panel relative to the sun at an individual time. Because for the most part, they probably all point in about the same direction. But we can imagine we would scale that out. And as we scaled it further out, the panels become more and more coplanar with each other. Okay, but we got that. Now, what we're going to do is say that's a fantastic looking vector. It's got an x, a y, and a z. Give it to me just as a point. And the reason we're going to do that is I just want a point that I can go through and take these points and that point and get them together. Thanks, okay, because this is a list of points, a bunch of x, y, z points. This is a single point, an x, y, z point. And what I'm going to use is a uh, function called vector by two points, just a starting point and an ending point, and it'll give me a vector connecting them. So I'll use as a starting point the grid ones on the ground. I'll use as the ending point the sun. So if I pull those two different vectors together, this is the or the point list. That's the start. That's the end. Okay. What I should get now is just a whole bunch of little vectors. Let's check them out. It's a bunch of vectors over there. What's going on over here? Here, we're not seeing anything too awfully interesting yet. It's not showing the vectors. I can create some lines from start to end. Actually, that's what you did last time, Andrew, wasn't it? You said line by start and end? Yeah. Okay. So if you want to see these, you can say line by start point and end point. Just a way to help you visualize it. So I could take all those as starting points, and I could take all those as ending points. And if I run that, that just gives me a little bit more to operate on. So you see them all kind of pointing up the point that's the sun right now. 
here's what I want to do. I'm going to turn those lines off. Is I want to take all those fabulous little uh, vectors and I want to basically draw some rectangles on those vectors. Rectangles which are perpendicular to those vectors. So there's a great function called plane by origin normal. What that's going to do is for any vector that you can feed in as the normal to the plane, it'll put a plane in that's at that 90 degree angle to it. So perfect for when you want to put things in there that are perpendicular to sun vectors or perpendicular to the directness vector, something like that. So we're going to take these vectors. We're going to go ahead and say the normals are here, those vectors. But the origins are actually going to be the individual points. So let's go ahead and run that. And you should see, kind of hanging around out there in the geometry, just this little uh, kind of field of planes that are hanging around. Right now, they're all pointing towards the sun. Okay, not too awfully bad. If you come on back over here, still not much happening in Revit land because there's not much to preview just yet. But if we do go through and change the sun in the sky, let's go ahead and change it to more like, oh, 4 p.m. Okay. Then if I rerun my Dynamo script, okay, you see they all kind of shifted over there, pointing towards the left instead. So, all my planes are hanging around. So, I got some planes. We got the first part done of what we were trying to do here. We created a grid of points, we created vectors, and we created the planes. The last part in this whole um, example is really just going through and creating rectangles that exist on those planes. So we have the old plane by origin normal. This is basically, we're gonna put some rectangles down but as we put down the rectangles, we actually get to sort of say, which plane are they drawn on? Okay, so we give it a width, a length, and choose a plane, and then boom, we actually have some uh, rectangles drawn. So come back over. Rectangle by width and length. Okay, I decided to leave it pretty simple, just two by two, but you can change that if you want to make them taller or shorter or whatever you like. I'm going to take those planes across, and this is finally going to generate a little geometry for us. Okay, so I got a bunch of rectangles in there. Okay, still just a bunch of dynamo geometry. Again, these rectangles are going to go moving around based upon what's happening with the sun and the sky. But finally, if you wanted to actually have some Revit geometry show up based on this, we need to take those rectangles and place some panels or place a surface based on those. And that's what the final little function does here. I'm going to take that surface. There's a great sort of function where we can create a surface by what's called patching. What that does is we just feed it a bunch of curves around the edge of something that makes a surface out of the middle. It's actually kind of cool for making a surface. Your rectangle is actually considered a series of like four curves. So if I feed it that rectangle, it'll go through and make a whole bunch of surfaces. Okay, those surfaces now okay, are just on that. You mean it like filled in the rectangle? Yes, it basically filled in the rectangle with a surface. These are a little hard to see just because of the orientation, but there they are. So now I have a bunch of points, I have a bunch of panels, and they're going to follow. But let's go ahead and just check this and see if it actually works. So. They're all facing the sun over there right now. Let me kind of change the sun to be earlier in the morning now. Let's say 10 a.m. instead. Okay, 
We aren't seeing very much just because my rectangles are so small. Let's go ahead and just make the rectangles a lot bigger. That'll make it a lot easier to spot them. So as opposed to two by two, let me make them 10 by 10. So over here, you can sort of see them there. Would this be like a way to create like a facade that moves with the sun? You're, you're speaking my language. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because if you want to have a movable side where the shade's going to continue to tilt and rotate, either to provide shading or to maximize sun, whatever you're trying to do, this is the way to do it. We can follow that sun through the sky and automatically have a dynamic facade kind of undulating to kind of always follow and address it. So really cool in terms of being able to kind of like just determine geometry based on the sun vectors. So, this is kind of it in terms of just the highlights of what's going on in here. But if you want to even kind of be really daring, try this. Go ahead and oh, change it so that as opposed to manual, it's automatic. This is kind of a very small example, so it's not all that much computation. But now go ahead and change it to like, oh, 2 PM. Drag the sun around in the sky to where you want it. Okay, and wherever you drag that sun, those panels are always going to follow. Okay, sometimes we like things that are perpendicular. Sometimes we like things that point at the sun. We can do all sorts of different things. We can come up with all sorts of interesting relationships. But where this is going to go, and we'll take it on next time, but let's just kind of think about just uh, sort of what's going to go on. Let me kind of pop this back to you. Oh, August 1st, when the sun will be higher in the sky. Okay. We have some channels that are always going to follow the sun. That part's pretty good. Okay, that's the first step. The next step might be, well, okay, the panels are going to follow the sun, but what if the panels actually change their parameters? What if they actually change their length? Or they somehow change something about the size of the opening or something based upon the where the sun is? and dynamically adapted. So not only do they change their position, but they actually change their geometry a little bit. Okay? And that's where we're going to go with the next one, just to kind of give you an example. Oh, it's going to be 10.4. Let me go ahead and open that up just so you can sort of see. We're going to say, let's go ahead and if we could figure out some sort of equation to relate sort of where the sun is to how the geometry should change, like uh, how we can implement that in Dynamo. So let's open this one up. You'll see in this funny little example what I have is a teeny tiny little house with some windows on the south side. Come on, come on, come on. Okay. I got those little windows on the south side. I got a series of shades on those windows. And the design problem I'm trying for here is can I design the shades such that no matter where the sun is in the sky, those windows are always fully shaded? Okay. And you can. There's actually sort of a little something we're going to do. If you think about what's going on with the sun and we think about the vectors, let me kind of give you the equation and then we'll like, or the, the basic math, and then we'll play uh, with the dynamo stuff next time. It starts with this. Hand that down. If you can imagine that from these windows or just heading up towards that sun, there is some sort of vector. There's a vector that's doing something like this. Okay. And if we wanted to always have kind of shades that were shielding from the sun, what we have to do is basically have shades that sort of follow that same vector. What we need to create is a relationship that looks like this. We need to create a relationship that when the sun is shining, okay, 
the shade line created by the shades actually follows the same relationship. And it's actually pretty easy to do. What you got to do is something that looks like this. We're going to say that this has two different components. It kind of has, oh, you can call it the X component, and it has kind of a Z component. So what we got to say is basically for every unit of length that we have, we basically have to have an overhang that maintains that same ratio. Okay, so it's not too bad for any height. I can say if I want to follow that vector, I can take that ratio of x over z and always go through and compute what the overhang has to be. Okay, and that's what's going to go on in the next example. We're just going to go through, compute that vector, sort of based on the x and the z, we'll sort of figure out a ratio between overhang and height of the window. And no matter what we change these windows to, the overhang will always uh, change appropriately. Or if the sun changes, it'll sort of change appropriately. Now, this example you're looking at back there in the, uh, on the screen has an extra little variation on it. It says, well, what if we didn't just want to have a giant overhanging sort of uh, shade? We said that there's a maximum shade length we might have or shade depth we might have. And if it gets bigger than that, we're going to split it into two shades. So it got a little smarter still. So that's where we're going to go next time. We'll figure out really what the distance needs to be. If it's above a certain threshold, if it is, we'll do one thing. If it's not, we're going to do another thing. But go back and adjust some parametric components. And this is heading right down the path of where you were going, Dom. And you're going to really say, I want a dynamic facade that is optimized towards the sun at different times of the day. OK, boom, you're able to have it. Okay, so let us adjourn and or pause and adjourn there for today. But as you're thinking ahead, just think about, okay, all this sun moving around the sky. I got all this like view stuff going on these vectors. Hmm, what can I do with that parametric thing I created or even a new thing that I want to create that will take advantage of that? And somehow it will adapt in a smart way relative to either the sun or some view or something. Okay, beauty. Let us adjourn for the day.